Uh, please join me in welcoming Lior for a keynote entitled Ardor Blockchain Scaling Solutions, Pruning, Snapshots, Subnets, and Lightweight Contracts. Lior. So, um, so to, today the value of Bitcoin dropped below $7,000. We don't care. Um, we develop blockchain technology and we think for the long term about how blockchain should, be, uh, should work. Um, I'm a blockchain developer. So, le so let's talk a little bit about Ardor. Um, let's do a quick introduction. Ardor is based on a technology called NXT, which is running in production since 2013. It's the first proof of stake uh, a blockchain in production. Ardor itself was deployed to production on January 1st this year. It's an actual product. It's not a promise to develop something. It's working in production since January, public token traded uh, everywhere. Um, what's unique about Ardor is the parent child chain um, architecture that I will uh, explain later. It solves real world problems and Gelorida is a company established by the developers of the NXT blockchain, which now develops uh, Ardor. Um, let's talk a little bit about the problems of the, the existing problems of the blockchain industry. So we all talked about uh, energy waste already of proof of work, but we also need to consider blockchain bloat. Every transaction ever submitted to the blockchain will stay in the blockchain forever, and every new node will need to revalidate it. Transaction processing is very inefficient. Every transaction submitted to the blockchain um, has to be processed by every node in the blockchain. Do we really need, uh, do we really need that? Transaction fee payment. Any one of you who is trying to build on top of Ethereum ERC-20 token realizes at some point that their users needs to pay gas to the network, but how will your users get this gas? They don't even want to know what is a blockchain. And then there's the issue that smart contracts are not so smart, okay? They are very limited because they run on every node. You have to, use meet, you have to measure their execution and pay gas per instruction. It's a very limited way of working. So Ardo is designed to solve these problems. Okay. Um, but let's talk a little bit about proof of stake. I've seen many, uh, this was discussed many times. NXT was the first proof of stake uh, in production. It's a very simple algorithm and it works very well. There are all kinds of proof of stake complications that people propose. They are not necessary. We can, uh, we can run this proof of stake algorithm on very small hardware. The, because it's simple, it's also simple to validate that it works right. It's not a 60 pages white paper that describes some amazing technology. It's something practical that is easy to, to, uh, to test. There are lots of theoretical, uh, theoretical criticism of uh, proof of stake. Some of that are academic, um, uh, arguments, some are just imaginary problems that does not really exist or are very easy to refute. It works very well in practice. You can see on the left how you can generate blocks of uh, NXT and Ardor. All you need is a Raspberry Pi and a solar panel, and we are not producing these solar panels, just example of how you can run a node of a blockchain. On the right side you see how guys in the dormitory of Stanford are mining uh, <laughs> all these tokens today. Uh, so you can appreciate what uh, proof of stake actually provides us. Um, to start with, uh, with we, have, we are giving you, with a blockchain, many of the building blocks needed to develop decentralized applications, like messaging, sending messages between accounts, sending it encrypted, um, sharing it securely with third party, uh, ability to register account properties on the blockchain, uh, key value pairs associated with an account, ability to store data in the blockchain and later remove it automatically and only save the hash for later use, 
phasing and account control, which are sophisticated multi-signatures uh, features. On top of that, we provide you out of the box a working decentralized asset exchange, voting system, all kinds of tokens that you can use, decentralized marketplace, privacy mechanisms that are built into the core so that you don't need to build it yourself from scratch. What we provide, Ardo provide you open APIs, JSON over HTTP that you can pick up in really, really quickly. Uh, you can develop uh, server-side add-ons in Java. You can enhance the wallet using JavaScript uh, plugins. The whole architecture is built for extensibility. Um, and we actually like it so much that we developed our own wallet using our own APIs, blockchain APIs that we exposed. So, but, so um, what Ardo brings, which is unique in the blockchain arena, is this unique parent-child chain architecture. The idea is that we took the proof of stake that we already have and like, and put it on the Ardor blockchain, which is a parent chain. Then we can have multiple child chains, each one dedicated for its own application. And this allows us to do some amazing things, like for example, transaction pruning. Once a transaction on the child chain is buried deep enough in the blockchain, like after 24 hours, we can completely remove it and forget about it, okay? We can also allow you to submit on the child chain transactions without paying transaction fee. The user itself does not have to pay the transaction fee. The business will sponsor it for it. Um, then we have another approach for, light, for a contracts that we call lightweight contracts. Because right now contracts has to run on every node in the system. Is it really necessary for every crypto kitty that you breed to run it on 10,000 nodes to verify that, that it was correct? Um, then we have a way to separate um, uh, our child chains into subnets so that not every node needs to, um, uh, to process every transaction. So let's take a little bit, uh, delve more into it. So, so we have a parent chain which handles the proof of stake consensus. We have multiple child chains, ideally each one dedicated for its own application. Then the transactions from the child chain can be removed. However, if you need them, you need them for your accounting, for your tax reporting, for your voting, for something, you can set up archival nodes that will save the full history, but it's no longer part of the consensus, so when a new node joins Ardor, it doesn't have to re-download the whole blockchain from the beginning. It can load a snapshot from another node, and only the snapshot provides you the state, the balances, and it only needs to re-download, let's say, the last 24 hours. Okay, um, right. The, since we have the child chains, okay, we have the uh, interface between the child chains and the parent chain is what we call bundling, okay? What, the, what this bundling does, it takes multiple child chain transactions and pushes the proof of it to the parent chain. That allows us to actually offload the fee payment from the end user, which does not have to deal with fee payment. And to understand, you need to understand how important it is, because every ERC-20 application now their users need to pay the gas to Ethereum. But with Ardor, you submit the transaction, you submit the vote, you don't need to care about Ardor, child chain, blockchain, nothing. You submit a transaction. The business that sponsors the child chain will bundle your transactions into the parent chain if, if, it ne if it's necessary. Um, this way, the business can sponsor the transaction fees for, uh, for its users. Lightweight contracts is a, is a, new, um, is a new mechanism we came, uh, we came with. 
And to understand, uh, first let's a little bit talk about uh, what's wrong with smart, smart contracts today. So you have to run them on every node. I already told you that. You have to meter the execution. But another huge problem with existing, uh, think about this ERC20 token, is that the contract itself saves the state of the, of the token. The balances are saved in some, inside the, uh, the contract. And this means, for example, that you cannot parallelize contract ex execution because then you need to synchronize on the shared uh, token balances array that appears in every uh, ERC20 uh, 20 example. We call it state stateful uh, contract, and it's a problem for scalability, okay? In addition, it creates a huge security problem because it's enough, one bug is enough for people to actually directly manipulate the state of the contract, the balances of your token. It's very dangerous, and we see time after time, we see problems related to this. So the concept of ardor lightweight contracts is, is different. The contract itself is stored on the blockchain so that everybody can actually validate um, that, that, that the con what the contract code is and what are the conditions. However, the contract itself is processed only by some nodes. Perhaps even, again, think about this crypto kitty. Wouldn't it be enough to only process the contract itself on one node and set another node maybe to validate that the first node didn't cheat or two out of three nodes? Do you really need to run all these contracts by 10,000 nodes and reach the same state? No, it's not always necessary. Our contracts are stateless in the sense that we do not save the actual token balances, for example, in the contract. Instead, the contract receives input from transactions and the outputs of the contract are transactions that still needs to go to the blockchain and pass all the normal validation rules. All right, so we don't, so the blockchain saves the state, but blockchain already knows how to save state securely not, you don't have to worry about the state of the blockchain inside your contract, all right? Um, we're gonna have a meetup about lightweight contracts tomorrow at seven. Um, about child chain subnets, that's a research project that we're working on. And again, think about the way that today we submit a transaction to the blockchain and every node has to process it and reach the same state. It's a huge resource waste. It's not always necessary. Once you separate your blockchain into applications, application per child chain, the next step would be that each node will be able to select which child chains it wants to process. I want to focus on voting. I will process the voting child chain and the parent chain. I want to focus on identity. I will process identity and the parent chain which of course will be much more uh, lightweight. The, no, the blockchain no longer needs to be a jack of all trades like it is today. Um, so as a node operator, you'll just configure your node to which child chains you're interested in. Um, let's talk a little bit about applications that we have. Um, few, week, uh, few weeks ago, Binance published a challenge to the public to create decentralized exchange proposal. Actually, a uh, few weeks ago, one of, the, one of our developers simply took the Ardor platform as is, with our internal uh, uh, decentralized exchange, packaged it nicely, and applied to the Binance uh, challenge because we already have it built in almost to their, to their exact specifications. Um, another interesting use case is a uh, um, kind of token economy loyalty point where uh, it's a project called Trific where you have a mobile application with a GPS and you kind, of, you kind of collect points that you can redeem for actual, uh, um, for actual business activity like booking uh, hotels and, and things like this where the... Um, where the collection of the tokens is uh, gamified, um, and it provides you a nice token economy around uh, kind of loyalty points. 
Um, so I'm, a, I'm Leo Riaf, a blockchain developer. Come talk to me. Uh, thank you very much.